cheap digital FPV that's high quality, open source and available to everybody. That is the dream that Runcam is chasing and today we're going to put it to the test and find out just how close are they to making that a reality. Sort of looking for the tearing of the grass now and seeing how it's handling that image. G'day you absolute legend, Stu here from UAV Futures and I have to say I'm pretty excited because we are going to be diving a little bit deeper into the world of open IPC and some of the developments out there for digital HD footage streamed back to us in our FPV feed that is not a closed sourced system. So it's not DJI, it's not HD0, it's not Walksnail. We're gonna be looking at the Wi-Fi system from Runcam. We did have a look at the open IPC sphere link. It didn't go well. This is a much more refined option and we actually get to fly this one. So in this video, you're gonna see Stickman Steve and myself out in the field giving this a real world test. We'll be talking about its applications. And let me just say right now, spoiler alert, there's going to be some expectations we need to manage right here because this is relatively new tech and it is not, I repeat right now, not going to be for everybody. There's gonna be a select bunch of people that think, man, I love that, I wanna get involved, but this is gonna be the video that you can decide like, is that for me? or am I still better sticking with those other systems for the meantime? Right. As a bit of an overview, I'll put some pictures on the screen anyway. It is a much more refined little system. There's two versions, there's Open IPC and the Ruby, depending on what you wanna flash it with. And the way we are gonna be connecting ours up to as well, there's two different ways you can do it. You can either connect it up to one of your phones using a little special adapter like this, or you can get a proper VRX HDMI out system. Now I don't have that. It is definitely going to be coming in the future. I wanna do another follow up on this today. We're just gonna be flying around using our phone. I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. But closer inspection of the system. This one, it has an SD card built in. It's got a little fan and it is much more refined than say this monstrosity, which was the Sphere Link, which we never really got working uh, very well. It is much easier to build here. And I have to say a thumbs up to Runcam because the exact same cords, it was so easy. If you would like to switch over from say, maybe you wanna give it a go, my DJI O3 cable, it just plugs straight into here. I didn't have to do any extra soldering and I love that it's using the same plug, the same cable. That's a great design and I didn't have to do any special adaptions for the camera or anything like that. Runcam really knows what they're doing. They've made cameras for a long time. They know that us pilots, we don't wanna switch over. Like I hate the DJI O4's camera. There's no real mounting solutions for like the light one that they've got. This, it just, uh, it works with what we got. You don't have to retrofit anything. I really, really do like that. All right, now, the, now I've got my phone right here. Uh, I've actually got the app open. I'm gonna link the app down below that I'm using as well. It's called Pixel Pilot. I simply plug this in and you can see it's starting to uh, boot up right here. Let me put a battery on this bad boy. So you can see if I point this at my face, look, here I am, la, la, la. Oh, it's got the little fan there. It's touching the Velcro. But hello, there you go, you can see me. Uh, so this is the phone right here connecting it. And that's, let me just unplug this. That's how we're gonna be flying today. So we're gonna be looking at the phone, cruising around. And I know what some of you guys are gonna say, Stuart, how's the latency? Number one, we're gonna show you. And number two, bear with me here, don't hate me. Of course, I'm going to prefer a proper set of goggles to look at, but if we are all about getting people flying here on UAV Futures, and if you only have a phone to look at, and a lot of people will have a smartphone, I think it's a great idea to give people the option to get a little adapter, stream it into their phone. I don't hate that, I like that. I'm not saying it's gonna be superior, I'm not saying it's gonna be better, I'm not gonna be saying this is the way that you should fly this system. All I'm saying is, I like that we have that option. Now I'm gonna put the voltages and the actual stats and all that stuff on the screen. This is the open IPC one. We're gonna go out to the field. You're gonna see my flight, Stickman Steve's. There's some critical things that we need to mention when we come back here in the studio to decide, is this the right one for you or are you better off with those other systems? But let's go do the fun part now. Fly it around with the uh, Wi-Fi cam from Runcam in three, two, one. All righty, it is time. We've got Stickman Steve in the background. We're flying around with Runcam's Wi-Fi 2. We're going to be cruising it, having some fun and testing open IPC. So we're going to be flying through our phone today. There will be a follow-up video with the VRX, but today, have you ever flown open IPC before? No, and last time I flew looking at the phone screen, it, it wasn't... I think I got 10 meters out. Okay, it, yeah. yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to fly it around, see just how well it goes. And is this on the right path? Is it better than the Sphere Link 2, which uh, I got some terrible results with. I couldn't even really arm it. 
And what's the other big one? The T3. Yes, the T3, but that's a totally different system that's not open IPC. Yeah, true, and we did fly that into a tree. Anyway, let's do it and find out is open IPC the future of FPV? Now, normally you'd set this up if you're flying probably on a ground station or something like that. But if you don't have a ground station, remember, you can always bring a stickman Steve along. So yeah. uh, we've attached the receiver to the top of his head there. You're going to be holding the phone and the GoPro. All right. But I don't know how this is going to go. We might lose it. I don't want to fly over any water today because I've done a very quick flight and I lost it up the backyard. So is that this one? Well, I've done, yeah, you probably haven't seen that one. That was a members only oh, video. Okay. I do like that it's got a little fan on there so it's not, I don't have to worry about it overheating. Yeah, it is pretty good. I'll take this over here on this dodgy phone. Oh, I've already got video. Look at that. That's pretty good. No. Start. So this should be recording the DVR now onto here. Mm -hmm. That looks good. I can I can actually see. <laughs> Bring this one a little closer to me. Okay. I think this is my arm switch. Yep. This feels weird. Okay. I'm just going for a very gentle flight to start with. I'm going to get even a little bit closer. They're good. Yeah, that's fine. I don't want to go over any water. I'm taking it very slow. And I'm not moving a muscle. You're shaking, brother. Now, of course, the detail's not going to be there like um, DJI or anything like that. All right, I can see us. So I was very careful. I didn't want to fly into us. Have you had any stuttering or anything? It's hard to tell if it's just a poorer quality video or if it's actually stuttering. It doesn't okay. feel like it's... Oh, 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 oh. I'll turn my head a little bit. No, nah, don't, don't move. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Okay. We really lost it back there. As in, like, huge smear, smearing, huge tearing. Um, That's strange, because it's like my head's pointed straight at it. Yes. I didn't feel confident there okay. at all. The only way that we didn't lose that is that I didn't freak out and just sort of kept turning. Yeah, what's, I'm going to do a quick roll. <laughs> How'd that feel? <laughs> it just feels scary. Mm -hmm. Like zero confidence when I'm cruising this around, which is such a shame because I want this to work. I really want this system to work. And I think it might be better with uh, the actual VRX instead of flying your phone. Um, yeah, like there, huge smearing, about a second delay for in, until it caught up. I couldn't do proximity flying with this at all. Mm -hmm. Now this is where I lost it. So I'm gonna see what happens. I go around this tree. Oh, 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 where are we? Oh yeah, man, that's so, I can't, oh, okay, we're back. I saw that, I was watching the drone there, that was crazy. Okay, yeah, like I, it, was a, it was a second behind, so. Not a second behind, I was like, oh, we're over this side. Oh no, sorry, it's like lag in a computer game. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're in the other side of the screen and the other <laughs> yeah, side of the, the level. Cool lag. <laughs> Okay, I I don't feel com comfortable. What's it like at just high speed? I'm just sort of looking for the tearing of the grass now and seeing how it's handling that image. Okay. I think the quality of the actual image is acceptable. It's just the the reliability is what I don't like. Yeah. I mean, of course, it's never going to be as good as DJI or anything like that. I'm getting used to flying looking at this phone, too. Let's see. I'm going to look at the sun here. Ah, like, it makes the bay and everything look quite nice. Now, I'm going to bring it in because I just don't have the confidence. And there's also an aircraft overhead. Right, hang on, let me. I'm going to bring it in. It's probably good because my arm's going dead. Is it? Yeah, a little bit. I'll land behind us. Okay, let me stop the recording. Ooh. Okay, let me go get the drone. Do you know what was really funny then? What? Watching someone's eyes while they're flying FPV. Because okay. they normally got goggles on, right? Okay, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like REM. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's funny as. Yes. Want it, Steve? Down like that. Do you want it closer? What about like this? Maybe just go that way a bit. So, yep, sun's not on my eyes. And then what about there? I can just no, no, back a bit. tilt it back. 
Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, I am not moving. This is all on you. Armed. Just take it easy. Oh, you can feel the latency straight away. But yeah, I see what you mean. The image quality is not that bad. Oh man, this sucks. Just looking at the screen sucks. Oh man, the when, image, when, image tearing right in front of us. Yes, eh? yes. Oh yeah, it's pretty bad. Wait, so when you say it sucks, you mean looking at the phone or the picture quality? Uh, picture quality is okay. It's yep. definitely better than analog. About the same price too, isn't it? But just the, the tearing and the looking at the screen, like not having goggles on. I think that's pretty garbage. How much confidence do you have? None. Like I'm literally right above us, just looking at these trees. And yep. as I'm just going side to side, it's just tearing up big time. I'm going to say stay in front of the field. It's gotten stable now. All right, staying out in front of us. So I'm, I'm not even confident to fly low. Okay. That's better. I think low is better because we can go get it. It doesn't, you don't lose it into the water. What's that? What's that for? Just the image skipping, eh? Like it jumped all over the place, a bit yeah. of latency and tearing. And it's sort of, and I'm out in the open, but if you were cruising treetops or anything like that, you're forced to hold your line until it recovers. Yes. I think that's something to remember, like, or something for me to think about while I'm flying. If I do lose image or it tears or whatever, I can't try and recover from it. Yeah, don't, it's not you, you, you can't, the quad, it's you just, can't trust the video. Mm. Yeah, no. Nah. Oh, that's terrible. 10 meters from us. Transmission quality is terrible. Yep, no, I'm pretty over it. You want to bring it in for a landing? Yeah. Okay. See if you can land behind us. If it was just smoother, yeah, sure. If it was just more consistent, yeah. that's the part that I am worried about. Like I had more, uh, more you'll faith. See, you'll see it in the video as I come past us then. It's just, okay. it's just destroyed you. Yeah, let me stop the recording. Yeah, I'll swap you out. I actually don't mind this app, like recording it on a little phone. Yeah. So, Radio Steve, thoughts on open IPC? I mean, maybe you already remember too, we don't have the proper VRX unit. We're just flying off this little cheapy connected to our phone. So yeah. it could possibly be a but different it was still experience. it's supplied to people in the open market, right? So yes. So this is an option that a lot of people probably have or choose to use. Yes. Can't afford VRX or whatever. Yep. Because then you, you are going to need a set of goggles or something that's to right. run that HDMI into yeah. that's not your phone. Exactly. Yes. So yes. for a lot of people getting in, might see this as a viable option against analog. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's quite there yet, even against analog. Yeah, okay, the picture quality is a little bit better. Granted, it would be even better in some nice goggles like some O4 Pros or even yep. some HD Zeros or something like that with yep. good screens. But I think there's an entry point. Like what they're doing is awesome. I love open IPC. And look at the other things in our hobby that have started off with open. Um, with open source. Yes. So I think they're on the right track, um, just not there yet. Would you go and fly it today? Nah, no okay, way. you'd choose a different system? I'd just go analog. Yep. All right. Who would this system be suited for then? Without looking into it more and sort of dedicating some time and effort to it, what I have seen, people can go quite a few kilometers, you know, but they're still getting that image tear or that stuttering. Yep. So for open environments, maybe a little bit of long range cruising and stuff yes something yeah. where you can lose video for a couple of seconds and it's not the end of the world That's you can right. trust your craft to keep flying itself yeah and you definitely want a gps on there as well mm -hmm. you know what i mean um, whereas if you're flying here and you're trying to go behind a tree yeah. and one second difference is your drone can be on that side of the creek or it can be in the swamp yeah. or something yeah. so and you're definitely not going to capture like i know the picture quality is okay it'd be if it was smooth you'd be able to post some videos maybe if you wanted to but yep. you're not after that juicy image and even just trying to sit in the trees there and just get some, you know, have a look at the detail of the leaves and things. Yep. It was just terrible, just breaking up. Yep. Yeah. I, I Actually agree. I had a better video out there, consistent video, 100 meters away than I did 10 meters from us. Okay. Which is strange. Interesting. I wonder if we'll have to change some antennas and, yeah. and do some things. And that's things the other thing, well. without spending time on it and understanding the system, maybe tweaking some systems per our environment we're in, I don't know. Yep. And like, and you've got Ruby versus Open IPC and a yep. whole bunch of that sort of jazz as well. So, and there are some other contenders coming out too. So, hopefully, it all just flourishes, you know? Yep. Have this whole other element to the hobby, which is awesome. Nice. All right. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle. In the middle, because they're on the right track. It's not there yet. I wouldn't 
recommend to anyone to, to go out and get it unless you want to dedicate some time and be a part of that development process. Okay. That's my bottom line. Yeah. All right. Nice. Right. Thank you. All right. Ready, with all that said and done, I have to say this system, who is it for and who is it not for? The only people I can recommend in its current stage with what I've tested, and I will be testing it on the Ruby system with a proper VRX streamed in some goggles. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button. But who do I recommend this for? At the moment, it is people who like to support an open source project. They wanna be involved in its development, have some ideas and help this become a better system. And they also, number two, it could be the pilots out there where FPV, it is not your priority. You might have a system where you might be cruising long range, doing something where if you lose your video feed, it's okay if you've got a couple of seconds until you get it back. Maybe you've got a GPS flown wing or a plane or something that is taking control. If you need that fast refresh rate and a stable image, this is not gonna be for you. If you're a racing pilot, it's not gonna be for you. If you're into freestyle, it's not gonna be for you. If you're just into exploring this in the current way that I tested it, it's not going to be for you. Why? because it is all about that reliability. The image when it worked is fine. I'm not expecting it to be better than DJI. I love the price point that it's coming in at. I think it's gonna be opening the doors for a lot of people to access and enjoy FPV. But for us drone pilots, when you're cruising around and a second can make a big difference between what you see, the screen tearing, and then all of a sudden your drone's over here, you're just gonna sort of have some crashes and have some heartaches. So that's where I have to say, I do not recommend this system in its current state with what I am currently using for 95% of pilots. It is only recommended for those people who are flying a craft that can fly itself and the FPV feed is a secondary experience for that. So it doesn't matter if they lose it and they get it back, they're not relying in on it all the time like us traditional FPV pilots are. It's not all bad news. I do wanna say hats off to Runcam. What they've done here with this system, it is significantly better than say the Sphere Link or some of the others. And I'm very excited because I'm going to be trying it on Ruby as well. So I'll be trying it around on the Ruby system, which I'm hoping is better. And also with a dedicated VRX that is not using my phone. Subscribe button's there, so you're not gonna miss that in future updates. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV related content. And um, yeah, it's not here yet, but I am excited for the future. I do hope that this system takes off and if they can get that reliability down where I'm not getting those big screen tearings, to be honest, the image quality is not really the part that's breaking it for me. I'm fine, even if it looks like HD zero, that, that option there for other people to enjoy, I'm all for it but I do need it to be reliable. I cannot have it screen tearing and jumping from one side to the other with big gaps of missing information in the middle because then I'm just gonna crash my drone for my sort of flying. All right, anyway, happy flying.